Monsters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Thursday, the uh, 25th of July. And let me see if I've got a little issue going on here. Why is this not? I hear it going grr, grr, grr. Um, I'm trying to get my chart, which has the E mini uh, down sharply, down 27 to 54 44. Why am I not able to go to my regular? Um, ah, there it is. Okay, it was just delayed. There was something going on. I don't like that. So I've got the chart that just popped up. Is crude oil down a dollar twenty three at seventy eight thirty six? Okay, so let's go through this right from the very beginning. Uh, the Dow thirty going up to the high of the uh, the high in July, which is forty one. Thousand three seventy six point zero zero, an exact round number high, has pulled back very sharply. Today's low is uh, thirty nine thousand uh, eight one seven. It's right now trading at forty thousand and thirty seven. So I was mentioning at the and the ten o'clock Tiger Financial News Network market update that not only is it a bifurcated market, it's really a trifurcated, it's more than a trifurcated market, but what's really looking up, the Dow 30 is is really telling us about the U.S. economy. It's saying that up until uh, six sessions ago, five, six sessions ago, and that was on July the uh, 18th, I, I should put the date in because I keep talking about it and I forget what the date is. There it is, July the 18th, um, the the Dow, because of the mix, it's really a perfect mix of the U.S. economy, um, went to a high, and it was suited exactly to the market conditions of that time. It's pulled back. I say pulled back because that nine-period moving average is still really uh, strongly above the 14, even though the price has gone underneath. That skinny wick from the last week, it's almost like a butterfly pattern, I call it. Uh, it's just... Uh, it's a doji candle, open and close at about the same uh, level with a long wick to the upside and then pull back. So that says to me that if there's a sharp close underneath last week's candle high, uh, sorry, candle low, uh, we've got to be careful because then you can come down to the 9 period and 14 period moving average. So you've got a couple of hundred points to go to the downside. However, and that would be, let me give you the price right now, uh, that is – uh, 40,136 and we're, we're below that 100 over 100 points below that now here's the, here's the issue and the question it was a really good question I had from a subscriber saying what makes you think that the Russell 2000 small caps especially when you'd always talk about the SMHs as being the the directional mark the direction for the market and they've pulled back dramatically from the 283.07 we've been very negative the uh, smhs for some time all the way to today's low where it is right now 232.18 i mean let's face it uh, it's 50 points that's almost an 18 to 20 percent correction in uh, giving back all the gains going back to the beginning of june that, that, that is really almost two months' worth of, of uh, action. That is serious because now you've impacted the uh, weekly chart by saying, yes, it's pulled back very sharply, but it's the first time that you've had this kind of powerhouse move to the downside, <clears throat> and the day's young, but you've had it to the downside um, since that big sharp pullback that was back on April the 1st, wasn't it? Let me just check the week of uh, the week of the 19th of April. But that there was an immediate turn to the upside <clears throat> and a screen all the way to the 283 level. So now what we're looking at is when there is a rotation, in other words, when one sector starts to weaken dramatically, <clears throat> but another sector that has been very weak and the leading sector pulls back and the other sector that was very weak starts to rally very strongly, 
what happens for fund managers, <clears throat> they start to say, I've got to get out of what was working, at least take something off, and I have to put it somewhere. I think they've been doing that over the last week and a half to two weeks, especially the last two days. They don't immediately just take that money out and say, oh, okay, now let's put it back. No, they hold it off for a little while, but just long enough to have some reassurance that the sectors that are working, and it's certainly kind of in the banking sector, <clears throat> financials, that and small caps, and uh, we'll be watching this very closely because if that money starts to come back, it's going to mean that the I'll do that right now. So just SMHs. Let's go to the uh, back to the S and P for just a second because I want to tie this all up. Uh, so the S and P is holding right at the uh, key uh, nine period exponential moving average is is still green, but that fourteen period moving average in the weekly at fifty three ninety four exactly where we are actually just a tad lower is is holding so far. And let's see if that breaks and it's an up uptrend line. And look at this free fall that you've got, a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. It's actually a little bit more. No, it's about the same in the uh, daily chart. So that's pulling back but below all the key support levels on the left so far. And the QQQ, since this is what we're talking about, the SMHs and the Qs kind of go together. Very sharply low. They've taken out key support levels. They're at 456. 454 was the level that I was looking at that should hold. It hasn't. Okay. So now... So the question then is a really valid question saying, are you telling me that these key leadership stocks and instruments that are pulling back sharply, that that money is going to go somewhere else right now? It can go into the IWM, the IWM, the Russell 2000. And my answer is, I don't know. I can just tell you what I'm thinking. I don't know for sure. There's no way to know for sure. This is the market. I mean, this is millions of different, uh, you know, maybe, maybe just a handful, maybe not even in the thousands, but the hundreds of people that that really make the decisions. But I'm looking at it and I'm saying, look, here's the market. The Dow is up 181. The S&P is now down 34. The SMHs are down, sharply down, I think, what is it, uh, 10 points already. Um, but look how this is holding. Now, the day is young. We saw this yesterday. We saw the, the uh, IWM was holding really well. And then suddenly at the end of the day, look, you've got this Chapman Wave Roman candle, inverted red Roman candle. If there's a move in the next two days, they can see IWM hold for about 90 minutes above I don't even think 90 minutes because if it even gets there, that's fantastic. But if it holds 90 minutes above 222.55, it's a 219.00. That's a long, long way to go. But if it holds above that, you can go even higher. But most importantly, if it starts to take out and then hold underneath the low that was made at 217.72, I would say that 215.44 uh, 14 period exponential moving average in the daily chart will that has to has to hold no matter what so far you can see it's holding very very well and look at the weekly chart very nice action day is not even beginning it's not even an hour into the session so to say it's very young it's not even a little baby we'll see what happens next that was 175 pounds of chapman we'll be right back if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97, and with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm going to go back, so just talking, finishing up here with the IWM. It's up 2.30 right now. You can see from everything we're looking at here, I'll draw this in as first, I'll make it a rectangle. As long as it remains in the rectangle, and it uses up time, <coughs> time and price. In other words, it cannot break down. It's got to show a, a residual strength. It's also got to show a divergence in terms of being able to isolate itself from the general market. That's good. So now let's go back to that SMHs. Yes, the SMHs are down, but they are part of the biggest scheme of the general market. That's why the S&P is down sharply. That's why the Qs are down very sharply. But at the same time, I've seen rotations go on for a little while. Uh, they can only last a little. They can't go on forever. They can go for on for a little while. It means weeks, maybe even a couple of months, and then you've got to see something else. Um you got to either see a parallel move or one of them has to go with the other. But to be in a divergence, that, that's, that takes two things. It takes money that has become free to be placed somewhere. So there are about two or three decisions for that to happen. Come out, hold, and put back. Where to put back, that's the fourth thing. And the other aspect that's really important is funds cannot hold cash. They always have to be invested. And whatever their charter is, if their charter is not to go into small caps, that's a huge chunk of funds that are not going to go into small caps. And that makes the money that goes into the small caps um, not necessarily greater, but it means it's more focused. And they don't have the selling pressure or anything. They just have free uh um, free reign to put the money there and see what happens. And uh, when I say see what happens, it means 
to see whether or not it holds support or whether the market continues lower and then this gets dragged down. It got dragged down yesterday. That's the reason why I say I can only look at the chart and say this is my belief. We've been correct in, in, for subscribers to my opening call. So far, how long that last? We took really nice gains on, that, on, on a trading position. We trying to get back into a trading position. I haven't hit that number yet, but so far that's good because I want to see this hold very well. I want to see the market, the monthly chart, a trade. I would love to anywhere from here higher for that monthly candle. I don't want to see it much lower because oh, that's going to change the uh, the candle that the way I interpret the candle. All right, enough with that. So now I want to go and I want you to say I had a question. I'm so sorry I didn't see it yesterday. Um, at the, at this time because it came in a little late and that was HMY Harmony Gold I discussed it the other day I said that it made a peak F top at just over 11 and it was pulling back and uh, together with that's in the gold Harmony Gold South African Gold Company and um, it's a pretty severe pullback and it's a leg D it's almost certainly going to be a peak D in tomorrow's close at 4 o'clock because it will not go above 11 point uh, let me just tell you now, 11.04. Uh, right now, it's at 8.48. So what I would have said yesterday when we were looking at it, because together with the stock, the, the silver stock that we have, uh, which is still holding above stops, we've got two positions, um, taking a little bit off, but we haven't done much else because it held really well, did everything that we wanted it to do, and now we'll see if it's able to garner strength. This one's a little weaker. So yesterday I would have said you take something off. Now, I, 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 Sandy, I think you probably would have known that I would have said that. That's why you asked me. So hopefully you did something. Which I it came in just after the close, and I it was already turning down. So I I didn't email you back. I would have done that, and now it's a little bit lower. But I'm just going to say to you, if you're a long-term holder of Harmony. Um, I would take a little bit off right now just because of money management. If you haven't taken anything and you, you have gains or if you're just looking at it, now I can't remember. You, I think you said, ooh, where did it go? I, I'll try to find the exact uh, question that you had. I'll see if I can find it. No, I can't. Uh, it was yesterday. Yesterday was the 24th and it was at ooh, I'll try to, I don't want to take time right now but it doesn't matter because there's nothing I'm going to be able to do or you're going to be able to do about yesterday let's do what it is today so I think it's getting really close to some kind of support now look what's happened to gold gold is just as a huge move down it, it was holding very well but it was in this rectangle formation almost a, a triple top and I said oh, triple top I don't like uh, gold had gone to a slightly higher high 2480 around about 88 and um, now it's trading at 2364 and if I put it together with silver silver's all the way down to almost to the 200 period exponential moving average that's why even though the, uh, the silver stock that we're holding is doing still doing very well still up in both uh, we have two positions, both positions. I'm, I, I, I don't know how long that can last because this just looks now. It looks like lower lows and lower highs, and uh, the GDX is pulling back quite sharply. It gapped down. It's a 36.12 down at 1.11. Uh, it's almost like a one to one to the downside peak A dreaded H failure pattern, and that that makes I'd said the 36 is going to be really important for GDX to hold support. I'd even go to the 35.54, the the um, 50 period exponential moving average. That's another, but it's not very strong. I'd, I'd go to the, this candle low. That's really important. The candle low of the eighth, which is at 35.51, and that's important. So what I'm going to say to you is. Take a little bit off, even now. It's off yesterday's uh, level, pity about that. But take a little bit off. And if you're looking longer term, then Harmony is one of those. It, it shows you the strength that it had. Look at this. High highs, high highs, goes to a peak D. The last peak D pulled back and then started a brand new buy mode. This one's a little deeper. And that's the reason why this $8 level on the left, which is the on the 14th, the week of the 14th of June, 804 was the low. If it closes under that, I think it can stall for a while, and that's and it's stalling for a while. Even though the dollar is the dollar at this point is at 104.38, up two cents, it should be way above the uh, 40. In fact, the pink nine-period moving average should have crossed positive 
and it's not doing that. It should be at 105.15, somewhere in that area. Ha! Huh, it's way under there. It's a dollar, more than a dollar under there. No, 104.38 is, is under that. They did go more than that to the low of the day at 104.06. So, oh, oh wait, sorry. Yeah, I know. And you've got an S in the weekly chart for the first time in ages. Uh, for But the week hasn't closed. But it does say that the dollar's not acting good. So this is something else that's going on to do with gold. So I'm just going to say, be careful. Take something off. And if you're... Uh, do you want to take every if you've got a profit in this? Absolutely, I'm going to suggest you take something off. If you're looking to put money back in, I would take something off here. I'd probably have a stop at 806 is the low. I wouldn't want to see it go below that. That'll be very negative if it does that. But take something off and let's look at it again either tomorrow or Monday because. Uh, ASA is usually the, our bellwether just to give us clues. That's been holding very well. It isn't down anywhere close uh, as deep as the others, but it is down pretty hard from the 20.50 uh, 20, 20 area and it's trading now at 18.50. That's um, two points, is that? Yeah, it's a 9%. So just be very careful. I'll be right back. Dow's up 186. S&P's down. Uh, is that 10? at 18. No, it's 11, down 11 points. Uh, a little bit better. I'll be back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. 
Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Folks, so thank goodness I did. I found uh, Sandy's uh, email and some others that I, I overlooked. I'm sorry. Um, so you just wanted to know what's my take on HMY. If you say what's your take on HMY, my guess is that it's something that you've been looking at and that you probably aren't in. And I'm just going to say if that's the case at 855.39, I'm just going to say to you, um, hold off. I'd much rather be buying strength and let's wait for gold to turn around uh, and uh, it's much better that way. Then we don't have to deal with <clears throat> catching a falling knife because that's really what it looks like right now. So I, I, I don't really like to bring this up. I, I have to do it because it pertains to exactly what we're talking about. You see, when you go to a stock like CDE, which is um, – CD is coal mining, uh, silver, and uh, it has some gold, I believe, but it's a silver stock. This is Kodaline, it was called, that's where it's from, that, that's the area that's mined, it's coal mining. Look what happened, it's in a rectangle formation. And I, I don't want to go into the whole Chapman Wave stalk Lake formation, it's done. I said yesterday, um, what was it, not yesterday, the day before, I said that it has completed everything that we wanted, both Microsoft and uh, core mining, uh, CDE is the symbol. Now it could do anything at once and it might want to pull back and you've certainly seen that in Microsoft. We've taken money off the table there for the trading part and we haven't yet done anything with it. We've done something uh, with core mining. It did go to a lower low and almost went to today's high, 627. And, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. and yesterday's high was 681 and what made a triple top. So this is a little bit, look, this weekly chart, that's a much nicer looking chart pattern. That doesn't mean to say it can't go tumbling. I'm just saying it's a better pattern. So when you're looking at something that dropped so dramatically, um, I just have to say to you, um, that's something that I would step away from. In this particular instance, we're in lower down, we've got our stops. I just have to say, let's see what happens. There's nothing we can do. And it's amazing that it even held us well so far. I, I would have expected it to be at 560 right now. It will be by the end of the day if, the, if, uh, copper, um, if silver and gold start to have another whole leg to the downside. I, I'm just I'm not happy with the action, but the, it might be a little overdone right now. And that's what this particular stock might be saying. Okay, enough with that. Amazon. So a question about Amazon. Uh, for Stephen the Dan, yeah, you see what I was talking about. Amazon made a high of two one point twenty on the eighth of um, of July. It's traded to a low today of one hundred seventy six point eighty. It's in leg D. That means it's just making a very concerted effort to go down stepwise. D is where other things can happen, both on the upside and the downside. But the low of one seventy three point eighty seven that was made back in, I think it was maybe the 1st of June, that is going to be important to hold if it takes it out. Then this rectangle that I drew in a long time ago, I said, this is what I'm expecting. You can go above, but I think this rectangle for Amazon is really where we are, and that could take you all the way down to 166.32, the low of the 26th of April. So lower lows and lower highs. If by tomorrow at uh, 4 o'clock, there is, it doesn't take out today's low, but in fact, it makes a candle, a Chapman Wave Roman candle by closing, uh, let's see, above 180, 180.40. That's going to be a Chapman Wave Roman candle. And if there's a close above today's high, if it doesn't take it out, that's going to say, hey, we could have a pretty decent bounce right now. A lot of the selling could be overbought. And I'm looking at the VIX index, and everything about it is suggesting, and we go to the VIX, uh, at, at the high that is made up in the 19.36 area, I think that that is kind of overbought. Yeah, I could do Chapman Wave notation to it, and I will do that. I always I always say this is the one instrument that Chapman Wave notation and the price are two completely separate things. But when it does coincide, 
and goes to a D, it just says, you know what, take, take it not with a pinch of salt or a grain of salt, treat it with respect. That is a really big move, going from the 12s to the 19s, and the Dow is up 200, not down 200. Yes, the S&P has come back, is now down only four. I think that we might be getting into a very oversold condition. It's the reason why we had buys coming in today. Funny enough, one of the buys that I had, um, I took off. I should never do that, but I took it off. It's something I discussed in my webinar and it's now doing really nicely. The fact that it's doing nicely means that I don't be, have to be afraid to at least start a position tomorrow. There are three stocks or three instruments that we wanted to buy. We've missed one adding back to. We've missed another one that would have been brand new. I just, just missed it by 20 something cents or so. But it's telling me that this is area and that there's a good chance that my analysis has, has a good possibility probability of um, being successful next week. I don't know yet. And that's what we're looking at to see how we close Friday at four o'clock. Uh, it's going to be pretty important to be looking at that. So Amazon, let me go back again. Did I even do Amazon? I spoke about it. Yes. I, Amazon making lower lows and lower highs. But this is a really key moment. It's actually improved just even the moment that I've been speaking. If it's able to get above 180.50 today and then have a higher high above today's high tomorrow, it says, whew, just for the short term, some buying has come in, and that's going to be important. Now, does that buying come in, eliminate the buying that we're going to the small caps? We don't know. That's why I'm saying this is a work in progress. I've done my analysis. All I can say is, will it play out or won't it play out? So for the, if you're interested in my opening call daily newsletter, we cover all of this. We've had some good positions. We've had the short position. We, we didn't hold it. Unfortunately, just got stopped out to the penny. That's the uh, SOXS short the uh, spy, uh, short the semiconductors. Look at that. Uh, 2160, we got stopped out. We did take nice profits, but 2160 was the last position. And lo and behold, that was the exact low. Oh, it hurts me to see this. The exact low on the 22nd, 2160. And here it is, having hit 2938. I could have got in, back in, just didn't do that. But look at that, what a nice move. And that's leg A, B. That's leg B. But that doesn't mean it has to go to a C and a D. All right. But then that's, I hope so. Amazon, I hope that helps you. Um, if I'm looking at a longer term position, then just give me a yell in the den saying, no, 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 looking longer term. Actually, I'll do that right now. So Amazon longer term. I think in 2024, that's the summer of 2024, I believe that we should go to, we should make a peak C, and then in the fall, we should make a leg D, and that should take you to the 230s, 220 to 230. That's my outlook, and at this particular point, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, we've got the Dow up 185, S&P is now only down two. I'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. We have a market. Over the past year, the market has been consistent in a strong upward trajectory. But now we're just starting to see signs of volatility. Don't let this volatility scare you. Times like these are when big money can be made. That's why I'm excited to announce a live trading event hosted by yours truly. 
Join me on Friday, August 2nd at 9 a.m. all the way until noon Eastern Standard Time while I trade the S&P, the Qs, the NDX 100, and I'm going to be trading the one-day options on the S&P as well as the NDX. To make this deal even better, I'm offering one month free of my Market Insight newsletter, which has beaten the market by almost a factor of five this year, in addition to a signed copy of my book, The Art of Timing the Trade. On top of trading the market live, I'll discuss how I plan my trading day, what times I've found to be the best to trade, how I decide to enter and exit trades, and so much more. I can't wait to see all you folks there. Make sure you sign up soon so you can get early access to my Market Insights and secure your spot. Wow! Let's get them, folks. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yeah, a couple of questions come in that I, I should have got to. Uh, I, well, first of all, RTX, RTX, that is Raytheon, had earnings yesterday. Um, Oh, today, this morning, I think, and it's usually up up at 113.31, at eight up 8.46. It's it's um, I I'm not sure if this is a brand new leg A. It could easily be alternate account F slash A. I I don't know what to say. If this if Raytheon is only a leg A, we're in for a really volatile geopolitical situation coming up over the next uh, I'd say into early 2025. And I've got this as a potential leg A in the weekly, but here I can at least say I think E slash A makes sense. Uh, there's nothing to do. It's just a really good action, and it'll sort itself out over a period of uh, about six, seven days. But here we go, leg E in the daily, leg possibly E in the weekly, leg F slash A in the uh, monthly. This is amazing. This is Raytheon. And, of course, they got the Iron Dome. I suspect there's going to be a lot more uh, needed. Okay. So, with that said, um, that's, uh, oh, an LMT, uh, uh, Tiger YouTube, it was the uh, day before yesterday. The, uh, what we're talking about LMT, spectacular move. There's a leg E in the daily, leg E in the weekly, and a leg D in the monthly. Unbelievable. Lockheed Martin. And a question then came in about IBM. It was on my list, actually. I was... I've spoken about IBM. I was going to talk about it in my webinar, but we ran out of time. It was it was almost the next thing I was going to talk about, and I decided to leave it. And what I said is there are stocks that have morphed. They 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 were just has beens. They were like Sears and Roebuck that never got themselves right, and IBM was like that. And then all of a, all of a sudden, over the past year and a half. Just it's a brand new IBM, and look at this earnings. A lot of things are absolutely fabulous. Up 6.29 at 190.31, not an all-time high. The all-time high was in uh, March, I believe. I think it was just under 200. Let me just double check. Uh, it was two. It was right there. Yeah, I remember talking about this. 100, 199.18. I think I said, how did it miss a round number high? 199.18. Let me just put that in there. And that 199.18 is actually a target for me, is at 190.44 right now. So it's a nice cup formation based on that rectangle that I always talk about, making high highs and high lows, which should take you to a leg D, just under, right on or just above the previous high. So it's still in, in progress. 
I don't know if it's going to do that on the weekly chart, but that's what it looks like. It has really good support at 182 to 180. And I just want to drag it across. Ah, there it is. 190. That was 196 right there back in Mar uh, January. And then it pulled back, cup formation, made it two times low of 185. And then it ran up to this 119.18 level in a cup formation, and then it gave it all back and went to the 200 period moving. Hand. Look how important that 200 period moving average is. And look at that nice move up. Yeah, that looks to me like a, within the next week or two, uh, maybe I, I'd say about August, it should be up at the 199.18 area. Good. Okay. And that's really what I'm talking about. When I talked, I spoke about this the other day, I said, this, not only is it a bifurcated market, within the groups, you had NVIDIA, which is now pretty much in a huge digestive mode. I don't think it's going to see its all-time high for quite a while um, at 140.76. But that was going to all-time highs when advanced micro devices was cascading. Uh, look at that. It made its high much earlier. Let me just show you where that is. That was in March. It was having a terrible time. And look at Intel. Intel was the, uh, it had a fabulous rally just recently. But wow, look at that move down when uh, NVIDIA. So this is what we've seen in a number of sectors. Now, I, I had a question in the den about a PFE, that's Pfizer. Pfizer's making a new recovery high. But look at that high that was made up in the, in the uh, 60s way back in January or December of 2021, and it tumbles down to 25, and here it is at 30, uh, right now 30.41. I've got this as a leg F, but it could be an instant restart. So this is what, for subscribers to my opening call, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at the has-beens, the ones that have really had, I mean, look, look here's Pfizer, and here's Lily, Eli Lilly. They used to travel parallel years and years ago. I'm talking about decades ago. Look at the split with Eli Lilly. Have we made all-time highs just the other day, about two and a half weeks ago in the 960s. It's now at 8 to 18, really taking a breather. And you've got, finally, you've got Pfizer moving up. MRK, Merck is right in between. It had its high and is holding very well near the highs. And... Um, yeah, so for, for subscribers, I'm looking at healthcare. I'm looking at certain things that are holding very well. And that's going to be very important here. I'm looking at the long side. I'm not ignoring short side at all. I, I did for the couple of days here because we were trying to deal with that SMHs. Uh, and now it's a little late, I think, at this particular point without a decent bounce in, this, in the semiconductor area. So there's a lot to look at that gives you the opportunity under the radar, while everybody's looking over here, this is a politician, you, have, you wave your hand over here, but it's over here that all the action is, okay? So we'll see what happens there. Um, so just talking uh, politically, not politics, but politically, media-wise, remember I said at the beginning of the week that uh, Kamala Harris, all the negatives, and she had, I mean, one of the worst negatives we've seen for a politician in, in that high capacity uh, for, oh, for decades, and look what happened. The media has got, given her every single thing that she wants. Anything negative is just not allowed to be spoken about, and that's what the media does, and that's they think it's their job, and I suppose it is their job. I'm just telling you the way I see it, and that's not a political who you should vote for. It's got nothing to do with that. It's analyzing the media, and the reason why I mention it is because it does have some impact on the market but only in a certain way. And then I'll discuss next week. I, I don't want to take time right now because it's a waste of time because it's going to happen regardless of what we say. So now I wonder the next question came in about rig. That is, rig is, there we go. Oops, I typed it in the wrong place. R, R, I, G. Okay. Rig is trading at, RIG is trading at 566, up 39 cents. This is Transocean Limited, offshore drilling, oil and gas. Now, this is where we have to talk politically. If this is a, a Trump play, it's got a long way to go. But it's a really good candle because it looked lousy yesterday, and today it's up um, 40 cents. It hasn't taken out the, the high of a few days ago. At the 566 area or 567-ish area, 
but it's acting well. But look what it has to, it has to go on to the kind of strength that says this long-term inside track repellent zone, I've got a power really high. I've got the 200 period moving average at, at, at uh, 581, and then I've got to go up and I've got to hold it. I've got all this really big red candles up into the 630s, 640s. So you want to see if you're long rig, you want to see by the end of August, it doesn't have to hold but it has to tag the 655 area. Just as one, one dollar high, yeah, that's a lot of percentage points. It has to tag it once, and then I'll say, ha, I've raised the base, and that's really important. I'll be back in a moment. Bells of Chapman, take it to the chest. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So uh, just a real long, we only got a limited time now. Let me just quickly go through these things right here. So uh, first of all, Tesla. Uh, Tesla is trading uh, TSLA is trading oh the wrong one it's up eight it could have a little bit of a balance yeah i can see that okay so questions came in i've got the spy i'm gonna if you don't mind i'm just going to go to the uh, e-mini right now because uh, i saw uh dudette and some others in the den get, got really good entry points here the uh, le level to watch the spy is at 54.79 
The 200 period moving average right now on the five minute chart, it just went above it at 54.77, it's at 54.79. If it's able to hold and there's another buying spurt, not a selling, we've done a lot of selling, another buying spurt, the 5,500 200 period exp exponential moving average in the 10 minute chart, that would be the target if we're able to trade for three 10 minute bars, that's for 30 minute bars, but I'm gonna say for 40 minutes, Three of those bars need to be over 54.88 to 54.90. And then I think that would be the next level. And the key support now is going to have to be 54.63, somewhere in that area. So that's it. Now, the other thing is we were looking at, I'll do this right now because it was a question that came up and I'll try to get to it. Uh, KRE, yeah, it's been one of the favorite things we've spoken about for a long time. It's doing very nicely holding here. That's the regional, if the regional bank... S&P ETF is able to get in August anytime is even able to tag once it's at 5797 62 uh, 61 to 62 that's going to be really important that means that the whole banking area is holding very well and you've got the small caps uh, the basically the regional banks that's very important anything I'm missing there okay so that's what we're looking at here for the rest of the day check out my opening call my daily newsletter and don't forget tomorrow's Larry's uh, live webinar. And a week from tomorrow should be very exciting. Tom O'Brien, what more could you want? Have a great day. Stay tuned here. And I'll do the news and then I'm out.